بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين. We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala upon all conditions and we send blessings and salutations upon the messengers and the messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, his household, his companions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless them and bless every one of us, my brothers, my sisters. When we have goodness, we all want that goodness to increase. Nobody wants it to diminish or deplete. So... For example, if you have a job, you want a promotion. If you have a business, you'd like more business, you'd like a greater profit. If you have good health, you want even better health. If you have something, you want something better. You have a car, you're, you're eyeing out the next model. You have, for example, a phone, you're looking at what has come out next. And everyone wants to see increase. Did you know that when it comes to your faith in Allah, you should have the same feeling? I am close to Allah today. I feel that I am fulfilling my five daily prayers. If we're not, we're supposed to be on that by minimum. But if we are fulfilling the five, did you know that you're supposed to be looking in ways of improving that? Just like how you would be looking at ways of improving other gifts of Allah upon you. In fact, more importantly, so you start taking your time when it comes to the prayers. You perhaps might want to engage in voluntary prayer that you may not have done in the past in a better way. Why is this necessary? It is needed and necessary because there is one equation that Allah has reiterated in the Quran that we cannot do without knowing. Listen to it. شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ وَلَئِن كَفَرْتُمْ إِنَّ عَذَابِي لَشَدِيدٌ If you are going to be grateful and show gratitude and give thanks, we will grant you increase. And if you are going to be ungrateful, our punishment is severe. That is an equation showing you how you can achieve increase in everything you have materially as well as that connected to this worldly life and that which is connected to the hereafter or the deen, your religion, your faith. So if I want that increase, I need to show gratitude. Just picture for a while yourself in need of something. Say for example, a hundred rands and there is a multi-millionaire right next to you, for example, in the masjid. And you look at him and you say, you know what, I just need a hundred. And he takes out a thousand and gives it to you. What are you going to say? What are you going to say? We will say, shukran, jazakumullah khair, thank you very much. May Allah bless you, grant you goodness. May Allah elevate your status. May Allah give you more in abundance. Suddenly these du'as that were never existing <laughs> in our vocab have now come out for someone who just gave you 10 times more than what you asked for. And you know for him it was just a pinch, not even a pinch in his pocket. It was just loose change, subhanallah. Do you realize that Allah owns everything way beyond that man? And Allah owns everything that man owns. Allah actually owns it. His, the man's ownership is secondary. Allah's is the primary. And did you realize that by you saying, thank you, it will really help me. It's going to go a very long way in assisting me. And really, you don't understand what you've done for me. You know what? The man would probably take out another 10,000 and say, just keep this as well. Because he was so excited about the words you used to praise him, to make dua for him, etc. Why don't we understand? Allah says, do you know that the same should be happening or more when it comes to the favors I've bestowed upon you and what you want from me and the increase of that when you are searching for it, you've got to do the same thing or even more. But Allah says also that man is weak. Even if he does a fraction of it, we'll still give him. Sometimes Allah says, we have given you even though you don't deserve it. In Surah Al-Baqarah and in other places of the Quran, Allah explains about the disbelievers. Allah says, we've given them as well and we will continue giving them on earth just so that we know their coupons are spent. 
and also that they realize later on that Allah had favored us. We were the ones who did not believe in the one Lord, the maker, the creator, the nourisher, the cherisher, the sustainer, the provider, the protector, the curer. We never gave him gratitude. Now the big question is, how do I show gratitude to Allah? I want to thank Allah. I want to thank him because I need good health, better health. I want to thank him because now that I have good health, I don't want to be affected by the negative health that is for example, via the pandemic that we are going through right now or any other sickness and disease, may Allah protect us and grant us cure. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on those whom he's taken away. But I want to show gratitude to Allah so that I have increase. Because that equation, remember, you want increase, show gratitude. So the question is, how do I show the gratitude? Very simple. Number one, understand that you must fulfill your obligations unto Allah. That is the primary method of showing gratitude to Allah. Before you say, Oh Allah, thanks to you. That lip service, what is more important than it, is to obey the instruction of Allah. If you did your five salah a day, it is far more valuable than saying, I appreciate your favor upon me, Oh Allah. Because you could say one thing and your actions are heading in another direction. But if your actions are part of the praise and those actions happen to be the obligations that Allah has placed upon your shoulders, you are successful. Imagine someone, the same man who gave you the 10 or 11,000, we made it now, right? And suddenly he says, sorry man, can you just press this button here for my car to, to, to open the doors? And you walk away. Would you walk away? That's the question. It was simple to say, no problem, I'll press it five times for you. <laughs> right? Do you agree? Because the man did a favor to you. He was kind to you. Kindness should breed kindness. <laughs> we know that verse. It's in Surah Al-Rahman. Is the recompense of favor or goodness. Anything besides goodness. Obviously, it is goodness. Someone does good to you, do good to them. So if that person told you, can you just press this button? You would immediately say, no problem. Bring it, I'll press it. When Allah who has given you your life, your food, your drink, your clothing, your sight, your smell, your health, your wealth, everything tells you just pray five times a day. How can we say, ah, you know what? It's a bit cold at the moment. It's difficult to make wudu for Salatul Fajr. So I think I'll give it to Miss as, I, as it is. I heard Allah is Ghafoor, Rahim and most merciful. It's okay. He'll understand that it's cold. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah. Now we're using the mercy of Allah to disobey Allah. That's not on, not at all on. You cannot use the fact that Allah is merciful to say, therefore I'm going to sin or I'm not going to fulfill obligations because he will understand. May Allah strengthen us. You want to show gratitude, you want to give thanks. Wallahi, it starts off by fulfilling the command of Allah. Allah has asked you to dress in a specific way. You dress in a nice way, neat way. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has asked you to fast, for example, in Ramadan. He's asked you the five daily prayers. He's asked you to abstain from haram food, etc. But more importantly, remember, I'm talking of fulfilling the obligations. That's number one. Number two is to stay away from the prohibitions. And whenever you have faltered because you're a human being, to seek the forgiveness of Allah is also showing gratitude to Allah. I show gratitude by fulfilling the command of Allah. I show gratitude by abstaining from the prohibitions that Allah has declared. And I show gratitude by seeking forgiveness wherever I have faulted because I'm a human being. Then I show gratitude by saying, Oh Allah, thanks is all to you. Lakal hamdu wa laka shukru ya wajidu jalla jalalu. To you belongs all praise, to you belongs all thanks. O oh, you who created from nothing, you are the greatest. That is gratitude. Then my adhkar come into place. I need to engage in dhikr of Allah, the remembrance of Allah, the continuous remembrance of Allah. I need to make sure I read the Quran because that is part of dhikr. Remember that. You pick up the Quran and read it. Recite it in a melodious tone. You smile. I'm giving gratitude to Allah. 
That's how you show gratitude to Allah. Then watch what Allah does to you. Number one, he tells you that I will give your heart its contentment. That goes to show that the biggest gift you can have as a mu'min, as a believer, is the contentment of the heart. And it is closely connected to your connection with Allah. When you're connected with Allah, he gives you contentment of the heart. Now let me explain. When you're a happy person, even if you have a meal that costs you five rands, and another person has a meal that costs them 500 rands, do you know what? You will lead a much better life in terms of quality because you have gratitude in you. Allahumma qanni'ni bima razaqtani. Oh Allah, fulfill myself. Give me the contentment with what you have bestowed upon me. Not necessarily increase in figures. Sometimes Allah increases people in figures. They go out sinning. They finally made the money in order to be able to do the sin. They always wanted to do astaghfirullah, but it's happening. But when we have from Allah and we thank him, Allah grants us contentment. Now listen to this. What if difficulty comes your way? Because Allah is going to test you, right? Allah said, I'm going to test you. So Allah says, you need two things, sabr and shukr. You need to bear patience and be grateful. Why do those two always come together? The hadith mentions them together. The Quran mentions them together because with the combination of those two, you become a complete believer and you are truly content. Combination of patience and gratitude. Whenever something happens to you, the first thing a believer should say, it could have been worse. I thank Allah. The other day, something happened where we missed a flight or it was not according to our plan. And I told my son, I said, just keep repeating, Allahumma lak alhamd. Oh Allah, to you belongs all praise. I'm not even upset. He says, but how come? I said, because right now what Allah wanted is happening. What we want, he has sidelined it. Don't you trust him? Allahu Akbar, Allahumma lak alhamdu. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us strong. It's easy to say that when simple things happen, right? But when you lose life or when someone is really sick or when something has gone damagingly wrong, huge robbery, then try to say, Allahumma lak alhamdu. Oh Allah, to you belongs all praise. Do you know what the Prophet ﷺ used to say? He used to say, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. You must listen to this and we must say it. Alhamdulillahi ala kulli hal. All praise belongs to Allah upon all conditions. Whatever the condition is, all praise belongs to Allah. Alhamdulillah. When you say Alhamdulillah, you're at peace. You missed your flight, you're at peace. Something went wrong, you suddenly tested positive. May Allah grant shifa to all of us. But you won't get so, you know, you won't lose that contentment. You say it's in the hands of Allah. We'll take it in our stride. We'll continue. So you have to bear patience. Patience is part of gratitude. Because when something small goes wrong and you start swearing, shouting, screaming, yelling, it shows that your gratitude is out of order. You're not grateful for what Allah's bestowed upon you. Why are you shouting, screaming, getting, you know, vulgar? Why are you becoming physical? Relax, take it easy. Thank Allah, praise Him. And Allah will take you very far, very, very far. So that's the message I have today. My brothers, my sisters, a lot is going wrong. Praise Allah. Thank Him. When you thank Him, He will give you increase in goodness and He will decrease your woes. He will decrease the anxiety. He will decrease the stress that you have. When you leave things in His hands, do your best according to the capacity given to you by Allah. Praise Him. Thank Him. Fulfill the commands. Stay away from prohibitions. Show gratitude to Allah. Seek forgiveness where you've gone wrong because you're a human. You're bound to go wrong at times. And then you see how Allah will open your doors one after the other. And then you'll start floating into a new territory where you are now into the Quran. You're now into the adhkar. You're now into the lessons. You now go to the masjid. You're now connected to good things. And life shall continue. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the greatest of blessings. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabina Muhammad.